Welcome back to Hasbro's Hide. A friend of the channel asked me to review a couple uppers that he uh, recently was able to acquire from Palmetto State Armory, or PSA. And the two differences uh, between the two are one is a blemished, uh, you know, quote unquote blemished anyway, and the other is their standard um, release. Now, they're both 16 inch barrels, mid-length gas systems in 556 NATO, one and seven twists, um, nitrided barrels, um, M lock uh, 13 and a half inch uh, hand guards and um, M bus sight setups. Now, I won't have the sights on here, we're going to put a scope on them and just see how good these two systems will do. Um, but we wanted to do a little bit of a comparison because the specs are basically the same. I mean, again, it was a 556 five, chamber and one in seven. Um, the uh, gas block, the barrel at the gas block, both say 750, so that's a you know a medium contour, fairly decent contour, uh, certainly not a pencil weight. Uh, so hopefully to you know be more inclined to shoot some groups, at least maybe it, the more rounds you get into it as well with the heat. But they are tapered barrels, and we'll take a look at that as well. Um, the M lock rail. It all looks, it looks actually really nice. It's a, a skeletonized well, so I'm sure the weight's not too bad. Uh, it's got a little different locking system here, so we'll take this off and take a look at it eventually. Not yet, but we will. Uh, they both come with bolt carrier groups, okay? So um, they both come with, uh, you know, nitrided bolt carrier groups that look and feel perfectly acceptable. Uh, no excessive slop and no binding either. And neither one of these have yet been fired. And so we'll be um, looking at that as well. Uh, the bolts are supposed to be uh, Carpenter 158 steel. So that's good, normal steels, that's good for a uh, BCG. Uh, it's supposed to be a full auto profile, so it has the additional uh, mass and features at the back there for that. Our charging handles are included. Um, so you know, the basic charging handle. That's not bad. You know, not bad. Looks fine. Just perfectly fine. Um, and so, not bad. And, and so, for the money now, you know, is it worth saving? Let's see. What is it? Maybe it's a. Maybe it's a. I'd have to find the exact price. I'll find the exact price. I think it was something either between eighty or hundred dollars less for the blemished version of this upper assembly. But I'll confirm that before we're done. So uh, anyway, same specs between the two. Now, just looking at these two, can you tell the difference? Um, this is the bolt, came out of this one, uh, this particular one here, and you know, really nothing there to see either um, in that. Now, the other one has the same thing, it's just got a zip tie holding that bolt in so it doesn't fall out uh, transporting it. And uh, so we'll do that, get that in there. There we go. Um, but as far as dust ports, look identical. The uh, upper receiver looks identical. Uh, hand guard is identical. The gas tube appears to be identical. And so where's the blemish? Well, the blemish one doesn't have the uh, uh, PSA logo in the hand guard. If you can see that there or not. Well, uh, so that's been laser engraved, the USA, and then I believe it's a Magpul symbol there for the, or m -lock, excuse me, for that type of thing. I could be wrong on that, that symbol. Uh, I think it's m though. Um, so anyway, those, those, those look the same. Now, uh, I really don't see a finish difference in the handguard particularly, uh, as far as, you know, gloss or, or any kind of defects in it. There's um, a little bit of handling here, but I don't know if that was original to it or not. It looks like they both have something similar. Maybe that just comes from shipping and, and you know, a little oil clean that right up. But there is no, you know, logo or text or lettering inside of here on this one. So this is obviously the blemished, what they call the blemished version of it. Um, so that's one thing you see is in the handguard. So um, there might be just barely, it's really hard to see, um, just barely a slight color difference between the two with this being a little bit darker uh, towards the really black um, scale, and this just be a little bit lighter. So that may be one reason that, that they uh, that they would call that a blemish. Um, 
But the other one I think is probably more in the barrel. Now, I'll take these out here. We're gonna scope the barrels, then we're gonna go shoot them and break them in a little bit. Uh, and then we're gonna shoot some standard federal frontier ammo, just off the shelf generic ammo um, as sort of a bench line. And then I'll shoot some of the more highly developed rounds that you've seen on this channel and see how these barrels like them. Um, being one in seven, they ought to like the little heavier bullets. So we'll try some 77 grains here, match kings as well. But um, like I say, we'll scope these barrels and then we'll, we'll shoot them and break them in. And uh, what I'm gonna do is shoot five, clean, shoot five, clean, shoot 10, clean, and then just start shooting groups. And so I have some ammo that I really don't care about. We'll shoot those to the first 20. And then it's got the Lake City bullets. And if you've seen the, the uh, bulk 5.5 series, those things don't shoot for anything in any combination so far. Um, so that won't really matter, but it'd be good for breaking in the barrel. Then we'll move into the front tier, and then we'll probably move straight into Bob's bulk bullets, like I ended with the last video that shot so incredibly well out of our white oak armament barrel. So um, that's what we'll do. But before we, before we go to that point, before we bore scope, but I want to show you the end of the barrels. And so let me reposition the camera a little bit, and I'll show you that. All right, hopefully you can see this now and see the color difference too. And so there's a couple main differences in this. The flash hiders are the same design, but the finish, the nitriding in the flash hiders is not. So this is a nice, dark, good finish. They both have oil on them, so it's not like that. But this one is lighter finished, maybe like a little rusted. So maybe in that nitriding process, this didn't uh, work out quite as well. There's no, there could be no functional difference here but it's just an aesthetic thing. So not quite as dark and neat and uniform and a little bit of a, you know, it's not really rust, but that kind of tend of that color to it. Same thing on the barrel. And so on the barrel coming out here, you can definitely see the difference in here. Really nice, dark, deep uh, color here and gloss. And here, lighter, a uh, little more gray with a little bit of this sort of orangish color to it. It could be because of the salts they use here, a little bit of a, you know, rust built into that finish. Um, there too. Well, there's also, and I assume these are the same manufacturer, but I don't know that for sure. Um, I kind of wondered if they really are not the same manufacturer of the barrels and, you know, PSA buying different barrels at the time, because this one has laser etched text in it here. And then it has another little step down in the diameter of the barrel. So right here, it comes down. So, um, we can get those measurements later. When I take it all apart, we'll mic out the barrels and do all that stuff. But we'll do that once we're done shooting uh, and we go for a final clean. Um, but so laser marking, finish is not as good, not nearly as good. And then this step down diameter to the final diameter where we put our flash hider and lock crush washer on there. But this one, then you see the uh, actually text in here, the 556 five, NATO and one and seven twist, et cetera, is engraved in the barrel, okay? Uh, probably CNC machined. It didn't feel like it's been, of course, stamped or anything like that. Um, so that's down into the barrel. Finish is much nicer, shinier, very uh, uniform and, and quite nice. So um, definitely a difference in the barrels. So let's take a look and scope them and see what we get. All right, this is the uh, non-blemished or normal version uh, of the of the barrel of the upper systems here. So I thought I'd start, I thought I found the uh, gas hole here and you can sort of take a look at it. It's actually really nicely done. Clean edges, uh, not a lot of chatter where it came through, et cetera, been really uh, pretty nicely done. And so now I haven't even cleaned these barrels. I thought I'd show you straight through how the barrel was done. They haven't been touched since they were shipped. And so um, rifling all looks pretty decent so far through here. There's certainly a oil protective coating in there, but nothing too bad. If this was nitrated, which, well, the outside certainly was, there might be a little bit of salts there and possibly that just a little bit of copper. They might have test fired it, maybe. I'm not sure about that, though. Uh, just a few little light streaks, no pattern to that at all so far. You see the rifling as I move around the grooves. It's uh, you're really subject to the light level here. I can probably try to adjust that a little bit. And perhaps you can see it a little better as we come around. But the rifling is all uh, pretty sharp, pretty clean, not bad at all. Not a lot of pitting as we've seen in some of the other barrels we've checked out. Um, 
inside this bore. So now we're back into the chamber and then on out. So um, chamber actually looks really good. There's a shoulder coming forward where the neck and free bore is and then we start into our rifling here. Uh, right there is, is where we're starting to rifling. So that would be roughly the end of the case right there. A little bit of a jump here free bore before we hit the rifling where they smoothed it out and then we come on uh, back into this. So uh, you know for a for a relatively inexpensive barrel uh, and upper system everything else here it's it's doesn't look too bad. Now we'll check it again once we have cleaned it, fired it, and then really done a good uh, cleaning and copper removal on it. And we'll get a better view of this rifling. But I just thought we'd take a look, like I say, and see literally how it comes uh, straight from the factory. Now we're moving back up towards the muzzle here. And we'll take a look at the crown just briefly as we start to come out. There it is there. So that's fairly sharp. Um, I would say, you know, that's, I guess it's okay, but that's not so great there where it's pretty much straight out. But there's not a real good target crown there. Um, but I don't think they, I'll have to look back. I don't believe it was advertised with a target crown on it anyway. But, you know, certainly acceptable. It's all sharp, clean, but you can see there just, there's, a, there's not a crown with that rifling exit and then on out the muzzle brake. So let's look at the blemished version and see if there's anything different. Okay, here's the blemished version. We're coming up on the gas hole again to start with. And uh, again, not bad. Um, respectful, I've seen a lot of them that have been where they've been burrs pulled up onto the rifling and things like that on really good barrels. And of course, once you fire it, a lot of that goes away, but not all of it, and uh, at least not right away. And that looks, uh, Pretty well done, pretty well done. So let's move on back, take a look at the rifling. Now, there you can see a bit more. You can see it's not bad, but there's a bit of signs of grooves where the cutter's been pulled through that we didn't see so much in the other one. You can kind of see that in between the lands there and on the lands, just a little bit. The same protectant is in there, it appears to be. There you see a little bit of like pitting. Um, Kind of normal, but you can definitely see it there. We did not catch that really in the other one at all. There you go. Now that is more like uh, rust pitting there. Um, so that could be why this is a blemish too. It didn't pass on the inside of the barrel or the outside of the barrel. And this does look like rust damage. So that might correspond then a little bit to the outside of that barrel. Uh, having that little bit of an orange um, color to it. So maybe it was in transport, uh, it rusted or just whatever, but that definitely appears to be a little bit of damage there. You can see more of it coming back through here. Now I've shot a lot of guns like that with that in there and, it, and sometimes it's, it's really bad. Sometimes a little is not a big deal. Uh, we'll have to see how this one works out. So now we're back into the chamber dropping down the shoulder there, the end of the case, free bore, and then there's a rifling where we're engaging. So right there, the rifling all looks, you know, the same, but on down that bore, you definitely saw why this was a blemish uh, barrel, probably more so than anything external that you'll see. It's stuff like that right there. So cutter grooves, pitting, uh, that just didn't pass their uh, normal quality standards, I'm sure. Okay, so that's a difference, at least in the blemish we see so far. Um, you know, some outside cosmetic issues, but that's probably just an indicator of what has happened to the barrel, maybe during shipment or maybe, you know, during manufacturing, I don't know, but uh, it's definitely seen, uh, at least from here, a little bit of rust. So um, let's go ahead and clean these up and then we'll get them to the range. It doesn't seem to like this magazine.
Probably be somewhere around three quarters of an inch group. 50 yards. Better than I expected out of that blemished upper. All right, we're back in from the range and just going through our PSA uppers. Uh, the bottom one here is the blemish. Now you can see, hopefully you can see well enough here, uh, the, you know, the dust cover, that's all the same. The handguard is pretty nice. It's not quite the same, but it's, you know, it's, it's certainly, uh, in fact, I think the design is exactly the same. Maybe the finish just appears a little different, but I don't think it really is too much different. But when you get to this end, when you get to the business end of it, you start to see the, um, the differences in the rifles now and the uppers. Uh, this flash hider uh, is a uh, similar design, if not the same design, but this is, you know, slight surface rust all over this. The barrel the same way. The barrel manufacturer is not the same manufacturer. Uh, and then, of course, you saw the bore scope at the inside of the barrel uh, where it was uh, rusted and pitted, uh, probably from the nitrating, but it's hard to say. Um, but the regular PSA upper then it really has none of those defects. You also have the logo, which is not present here, as well as some markings and things on the handguard. The barrel is a different barrel, um, very nicely. Uh, finished and also really no issue there, no issue with the flash hider and everything else then appears to be uh, just fine. And so um, that's the main difference. Exterior, you saw the barrel difference and that was the big thing. So what does it mean to results? All right, let's take a look at our target here. So this is the blemish. Now this is after break-in, etc. But with our custom loaded uh, 77 grain sear match kings with accurate 2520, an incredibly accurate load you can see in some of the other videos uh, both in the Wilson Combat Barrel and the White Oak Armament SPR Barrel. So you can check those videos out if you haven't seen them. But take a look at this. Now this is a blemished gun, okay? Um, pretty amazing. Now this is a shot at 50 yards, but I'll give you the MOA for a 100-yard target. So that's a 0.442 inch group, inch group at uh, 50 yards, or 0.844 MOA. Out of a gun, and you saw the barrel, how bad it was. Um, Boy, that's not hard to, hard to argue there. If you don't do a lot of shooting, maybe you could take that blemish. I personally wouldn't want the blemish because, one, I'm just not sure how long it's going to last, if you're going to totally stop the rusting, what's going to be going on, the life of that barrel. But you get a lot of other things free with it, and so or free. You get a better package as far as other things with that upper. But you pay for it because you get a lesser quality barrel and flash hider. Um, so anyway, that's, that's that one. So if you look at this one here, that's a 1.325 MOA. And that opened up only because of that one shot. Okay. That's pretty awesome. Pretty awesome considering. And then we backed up these shots again with another sub MOA. Uh, this is a 0 0.480 group or 0 0.917 MOA. Uh, <laughs> I think it shows that, you know, if you shoot really good ammo, you can make even, um, questionable barrels shoot a lot better than they would otherwise. If you saw some of the Lake City, this is the best target we have to Lake City break-in ammo with a 55 grain Lake City. And, um, you know, you always are getting these big flyers out here and throwing you out two, three, four MOA. Um, so, you know, this is, this is what that is. Okay, now for the non-blemish barrel. Um, yeah, it shot really, really well. Now, break-in, you know, similar. Uh, this was the Frontier ammo, and again, I'll show the stats at the end. So Frontier didn't shoot so bad, but the break-in, um, you know, 55-grain Lake City bulls are just terrible. But that's why we shoot them for break-in. Um, but for the 77-grain the Sierra Match King with Acura 2520, that's a 0.44 rough group. Again, I'll have to check the stats here. I'll, I'll have them right after this section for you. Just a little bit bigger here, still sub-MOA, and then right back to the same kind of numbers again. Um, <laughs> You know, this is not a really high-end rifle, but I tell you, the, the, the barrel and the 
upper and everything is working, handguard working really well together. Now, of course, this was with my lower with the LaRue MBT trigger, um, you know, on a good scope, et cetera, on there. And so that helps a lot. I mean, it helps an awful lot. When you put a good trigger and a good scope on most ARs, you can make them shoot much, much better. But when you combine that with really good ammo, and this is a really good hand load that's worked out on many rifles, um, you know, it's pretty, pretty awesome. So, boy, I tell you what, you could save yourself a lot of money with this PSA upper. Uh, I, with the non-blemished, I would, my personal preference, but you can judge for yourselves here uh, whether that's worth that or to you or not. But I mean, this is crazy good. Now, uh, the difference between that and a White Oak Armament or Wilson Combat is the White Oak Armament or Wilson Combat does this 100 yards. Okay, well, this is twice the size of the group, or this will be twice as big as the Wilson Combat group uh, at 100 yards. You know, it's just what it is. It's pretty good. But, you know, I mean, hey, you're paying a lot less. And, you know, the Wilson Combat and the White Oak Armament barrels are, if I remember right, about $300, $320, you know, and you're paying just a little bit more than that for the entire upper uh, from Palmetto State. And so you can't complain about these results. So um, just thought I'd share this with you. If you're interested in these uh, uppers, you know, they're, they're pretty awesome for the money. I just really am surprised. Uh, the blemished, I'm really surprised on how well it performed. Now, how well it lasts, that's a totally different question. That's up to you to figure out if that's the way you want to go. But in either either case, you know, for plinking, to shooting every once in a while, I think that blemish is not bad. For precision shooting and for plinking and for general shooting, uh, the non-blemished is, I mean, it's a pretty solid performer. I'm really, really impressed. I have no affiliation with them. Like I say, a friend of this channel just loaned me these barrels and uppers and said, here, they're brand new, never been shot, give them a whirl and see what the difference is. So um, there you go. There you have it. Um, you can make your choice as you will. I think you cannot really go too far wrong with either one of these. Palmetto State has done, I think, for the money, a very good job with these. So anyway, hope you liked it. If you do, uh, give me a like and subscribe. Thank you.